flight attendant. Thank you. The captain has turned off the fasten seatbelt sign. Please use caution when opening overhead vents as items may have chips in during. Hi everyone. It's a little past 2 a.m. And although the event is like 11, it's gonna take me at least three hours to get ready for getting out of student mode. I have work to do tomorrow morning as well. So um, I really want that complimentary espresso, but I really shouldn't. Oh. ready to go. I'm going in a little early because they requested an interview. I thought I would have time to get breakfast. Five minutes. Okay. Less than less than ten, ten miles. miles. Yep. Okay, so I made it back to the hotel. And I have like the biggest, biggest car sickness. I think it's like a combination of not getting enough sleep, no breakfast, highly caffeinated, and heels. The hotel's really pretty and I didn't get to enjoy all that. So I really wanted to take photos, but I am just feel like I'm gonna throw up. I'll maybe call and see if I can get into my dinner earlier. Yeah. But if I do take a bath, it doesn't look like I put in a lot of effort into my hair, but I did. So if I wash up, I'm just gonna have to do it all over again for the dinner. So uh, I don't know. <sighs> we'll see. I am much more casually dressed, a lot more comfortable, and hungry. Okay, 
so this is where I book my dinner and yeah see that it's really funny how all these names of law firms that wouldn't have stood out to me half a year ago are just like right there now see it everywhere and I don't know if I want the starter or a side Ooh, I would say do the starter as a side because then you can do like surf and turf uh, huh. I like the scallops or the barbecue shrimp Hmm. So if I'm getting um, half dozen, can I do three three? You can do three three. Yeah. All right. I am not good with this, so I'm really nervous, like this. Ooh, oh, it wasn't that hard. Like some plastics are super thick. So a little drunk after an hour long bath, needed hydration, but something sugary. No, this is just, mm. The pearls are weird. A tall latte would be one, uh, one shot. Okay, I'll, I'll have a grande then. I could also just add a shot to a tall. Do that? Yeah. Let's do that. Okay. A tall latte, add shots. What's your name? Gina. Gina, hi Gina. We got a car. There we go. I'll be right back. Puffy and tired, but let's do this. I need to get carbs and sugar into my system before I can talk. Okay, I am coming back to life. This is something, because I'm always like unnecessarily ahead of things. This is what I've been worrying about even before submitting my paper to ELI. I was worried that I was gonna win first place. Not like, oh my God, I, my paper is so good. What if I win first place? Not that kind of concern, but just regardless of the quality of my paper, I kind of didn't want to come first place. And when I got the call, it was a really pleasant surprise. And I was also kind of happy that I was runner-up, not the winner. Here's why. Okay, so the first place, the winner gets a really good deal. The winner gets to go to the Grammys, like the actual show. I don't get to watch the show. 
Um, and you get to be called onto the stage instead of being recognized on the spot with a spotlight, which is what I got and I liked it. Thank you. Um, I didn't want to win because I I have dreamt of the Grammys my whole life. Every single day for about two decades or more, I have dreamt of going to the Grammys, but not for winning a writing competition. I was worried that if I did win this competition and get to go to the Grammys, may do some serious damage. <laughs> I was worried about that because you think you're okay and you are kind I think I'm halfway there and I'm okay with watching music shows watching my friends go on stages having concerts it's okay I like yeah nothing those stuff that doesn't impact me at all because I was just in the k-pop world for such a long time and I know what comes with all the success so I think the reason why it was different for me this time is I don't compare myself with others but this is a comparison of my love of life and reality so if you have to compare a shattered dream and reality right in front of you it's, it's gonna be tough and I was worried about that fortunately I'm in a place where I can be sure I am sure that I will be there someday I have no doubt about that, but I'm not there yet now. <laughs> I think I'm a little past halfway. Yeah, so that's why it was a concern and why I am very happy with my runner-up place. And that sums up how I am feeling this weekend. Oh my god, I should have started the video with what, what the contest is about. I'm so sorry. I'm just assuming that everybody knows what this contest is about. Okay, so. This is a writing competition and you would think I have um, a leg up because I have a decade of writing career with 20 books but it's different. Legal writing and creative writing are just two very different things. I think legal writing involves a lot more research, analytical organization, whereas creative writing, you can just kind of defer to the author I'm still getting used to the format and I I much prefer creative writing to be honest um, but I had a blast with this contest so it's for all students in American law school and the issue has to be pertinent to legal issues taking place in the music industry and I knew about this contest when I get admitted when I get admitted to school and there was like four or five months before actually studying the school. I was just researching what I would do in law school. And then I came across this yeah, like competition. I'm like, wow, I want to do this. It was like the first and foremost thing that I wanted to do during law school. And I knew I was reading the papers, looking at the winners, previous winners, realized that there was no Georgetown student. So as far as the school knows, I'm the first Georgetown law student to have, to have, have been placed in the top three of this competition which ran for 25 years so very proud to represent my school yeah so I knew I wanted to do this and for the past year I was on alert for petition topics and I was gonna do ticket scalping um, or just ticketing because when I arrived to the US and Pretty much the only hobby I had was just going to shows. I realized that the ticketing system is really messed up here. So I was like, there's something wrong with the ticketing system here. And there's also a really big issue with secondary markets. It's, it's a mess. So I'm like, ticketing issues, I want to get to. But since it was so prevalent with Taylor Swift's tour, Ticketmaster crashing, I immediately thought everyone's going to be writing about this. Like everyone is going to be writing about this. I realized that a lot of it could be really related to NFTs, which I kind of know about, like, but I'm not the NFT expert. So I decided to let go of that topic. I'm like, people who are better equipped with background knowledge, it's gonna be writing about this. So I'm gonna have to find another topic. That kind of hurt because I, I was hanging on to this topic for a while. So this is what I do with writing books as well. I go and research the market. I look up 
potential competition if there is any monopoly going on in the niche that I am trying to get into. If there's a book that's dominating the market, I'm not gonna write about it because even if I do, it's gonna be really hard to pitch that to the publisher. One of my best-selling books is South of France Guidebook and I don't know if I talked about this already but the publisher wasn't so hot on it at first. They are now. Okay, so we don't have a book about South of France and they're like, maybe for a reason. But I'm like, okay, but I definitely see a market. Like if you look up big data on Nice and Cannes and Provence, it just comes up and it's, it's a market. And they said, yeah, just for the sake of expanding the series, let's do South of France. And it, people apparently were waiting for this book. So it made everyone happy. But yeah, I, I make sure that I do the market research and there was no need for me to research this market because I knew everyone was going to write about this and the winner wrote about this topic and I was really glad that he did because it was a learning experience I'm like oh so I, I moved on to my topic which was crowd control at first I was gonna pick on the law I'm like I'm gonna pick on the law that deals with crowd control because there's just so many crowd crushes happening in live performances it just happens regularly so I was gonna pick on the law that was regulating crowd control and found out to my shock that there wasn't one. So that was my topic, yeah. So this took up all my, um, I just, yeah, I had no winter break. So I was telling myself, I'm just not gonna do any extracurricular work this semester, but that just, yeah, I, no, it's not happening. I'm already doing, <laughs> but nobody's forcing this on me. And I'm taking up work that I really want to do. I have the broad and then after lunch, I'm gonna go to the last bookstore and then it's gonna be the Grammy Museum, which is right next to the crypto arena where Grammy is taking place tonight. And then it's gonna be back to the airport, taking the red eye back home. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna finish my coffee and get ready to go out and enjoy the sun. At least until I am at the airport. I don't really have a lot of things to do, so I'm just gonna fill up on my vitamin D. I have no idea what is on camera because I cannot see.
every note within every song. This is not a Zoom background. Even though I told them I was having an important meeting. That's not gonna happen. Over this unprecedented year. Yeah. <laughs> 